Hello and welcome to the online service of Nambour Anglican Parish. Through this online service, we pray you find encouragement in your walk with God. May God bless you today as you join your spirit with God's spirit in worship and fellowship. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. Amen. Our capacity to gossip and speculate has reached global proportions as our commentary and careless thinking echoes around the world. We break people. We cause people to be attacked and injured and killed. Sometimes such incitement and speculation is done deliberately, such as we read in the news about the riots in the UK, where people have deliberately provided misinformation to provoke expressions of racism, violence and injury, destruction, deep psychological wounds and trauma. It is extraordinary how quickly we move from being reasonable people to becoming a rampaging mob, choosing what we might believe, what is our truth, what suits and fits our world view, and perhaps enjoying even where we can cause the most damage and hurt, to take revenge and to scapegoat, taking vicarious pleasure in the drama of it all. We saw it here in Australia when a young man was attacked and killed innocent shoppers and his name and motive was attributed to the wrong person and we were all invited to follow the same chase down the rabbit hole which led to the riots a week later when a priest was attacked and those with ill intent were able to wreak havoc through third parties. Do you know, I once heard a description of gossip as being like a feather pillow, which once it is burst, becomes impossible to put all the feathers back. They blow away, they stick, and they take on a will of their own, and the gossip and the allegations, the unkindness, abuse, and speculation similarly move beyond our control very quickly. Our contribution to bursting the pillow is where I chose to start this reflection today. And I did so, but I'm not sure if you noticed, but the way the Jews are frequently referred to in John's Gospel is very problematic and has been used as a focus and excuse for anti-Semitism over the subsequent two millennia. And we can see our own behavior and willingness to speculate as it was done by those gossiping by Jesus' neighbors, once again calling into question who he is, questioning his right to know God personally, and denying his message, moving from questioning and confusion to complaint and derision. Their willingness to listen, to wait before rushing to judgment about Jesus himself or his message is conspicuously absent. Jesus always seeks to point people to look at the world differently. We are invited not to pay attention to the distractions raised in gossip and speculation, but to concentrate on what is being said, to listen to God directly. God is speaking through God's Son, and the message is life to all who hear it and believe. Jesus focuses on why the crowd misunderstands him. He begins by making sure we know it is God who sent him, and it is God who draws us closer to listen. Jesus has already told his listeners, God calls us all to believe. And the fact that we can hear this call means God is already working in us and helping us to hear the message. And in stepping forward to listen and respond and believe, God's work is already active in the world. We are called to believe Jesus is the bread of life for each of us. As God pulls us closer to Jesus, only then will Jesus raise us up. 
We can now see God has brought all of us closer to Jesus. We are all able to participate in the feast of life with Jesus. We all say yes to the invitation which God has brought us to hear. Jesus speaks to a deeper issue affecting the people who are questioning him. Whether or not they realize it, they too are exploring the relationship between the grace of God and the free will of humanity. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, says Jesus. Jesus shows them they would not even be there in their state of confusion and denial. So caught up are they in the gossip and speculation which they have understood to be a stumbling block, thereby generating all the complaints about him, were it not for the grace of God operating through them and in them. It is a blessed reminder of how God is actively drawing them and us closer to Jesus, even if they or we are not aware. The belief it is God who draws people to Jesus is seen in a broader understanding concerning both God and God's Son in God's relationship with all humanity. The prophetic statement that it is God who teaches humans takes on a new implication where the test of truly having learned from God is in the movement towards Jesus and acceptance of Jesus' claims. Jesus embodies the divine willingness and effort to be in active relationship with humanity within human history. And the interesting thing is, in Jesus' culture, bread was not only food to be eaten, but it was also the means by which food was scooped up from the plate. By using our hands, we are able to take food safely from the plate into our mouths so that we can eat. The bread is an instrument as well as food. We can then hear God reminding us in John's Gospel, not only is Jesus the Word made flesh, incarnate, made real for us to see and hear and believe and recognize and to accept his presence in our lives, but Jesus himself is our food for life real life, life with God, not simply life in the world. By stepping into new life, we can see the old life for what it is, not filling us, not satisfying us, leaving us empty, not helpful, not life-giving. Any illusions we are dealing only in poetic imagery and creative speech is wiped away with Jesus' words. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. John's presence, Jesus' presence, is essential for the very life which God is offering to us all. His body is bread that is broken, so that we may be made whole. His life is offered, so we who receive it might live. We may not understand how bread can become an extraordinary means of grace, but we do know the experience of Christ's presence in the bread and in the cup is a communal one. We do this by gathering together in community, brought to life by the gathering of Jesus' faithful disciples around the table. This bread is real. This life in God is real, and what is not real is the seductive life of the world around us, the gossip and speculation distracting and deluding us from what is important. I hope you will come near and share the bread of life with each other and with God. The Lord be with you. May the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you what is pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit 
be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Christ. Amen. watching today. We hope it has been an encouragement to you for your spiritual life. Please subscribe to this channel. Also, if you would like to support us financially, you can click the link in the description below. Thank you for joining us. God bless.